How can anyone, whether they want to work in a language school or privately from their own laptop anywhere in the world, create a rewarding and impactful career teaching English as a second language, even if they are just starting out or have no teaching experience or ability? Hi, my name is Lynette Kim and here on the TESOL Talk podcast, I aim to answer that very question. There are basically two types of evaluation in the ESL classroom. One is formal and the other informal. Now, formal evaluation is where you're going to give students types of tests and that cover listening, speaking, reading and writing to see how their progress in their lessons have been going. If you're privately tutoring, you should schedule in to do this and look at how many weeks of lessons that you're booked for. Um, As a general rule, you give students evaluation tests after three months. But if you're teaching for a shorter period of time, then try and do an evaluation about halfway through whatever program of study you're doing. In an ESL school, evaluations are generally every 10 to 12 weeks, so that three-month period. And ESL course books are great because they have built in evaluations based on the vocabulary, the grammar, um, the tasks and activities for listening, speaking, reading and writing that the students have been practicing and learning in the ESL classroom. And you can just print out these tests, they're usually two pages, and you print them out and you hand them out to students and then you give them however long is prescribed, whether it's an hour or whatever, and you tell them that they have to do these tests, they don't have um, use of their uh, m- mobile phones or uh, diction- electronic dictionaries that they use. They have to do it themselves. They're not allowed to talk and generally not supposed to leave the classroom. But, I mean, you don't have to be overly strict with that because it is just an evaluation. It's not like a test to get into higher studies. But once students complete these tests, what you can do is have them put their names on them and the great thing about the ESL classroom, you can actually have students swap tests with each other and then you can read out the answers. We have students first attempt the answer. So what was the answer to number one? What's the answer to number two? And you can actually go through with the class, giving them the answers and explain. And students can say, oh, I didn't get, understand that. And you can then explain some of those activities from the test live to them while you're actually discussing the answers, which is really great for students. It helps them and they'll take notes on that. So then students mark each other's tests basically um, and then they hand them back. And don't worry, the student getting back their task, uh, their test marked by someone else will go over and double check those answers because they'll want to make sure that there wasn't any mistakes made in the marking. And another good thing along with that similar vein is Put the answers up on the board as you're giving the answers to students so that they can double check later on. So this is your formal evaluation. Um, Now informal evaluation is still important and this is where you're going around the class while you're teaching and you're just checking how students are going. So you're, you're listening in when they're doing speaking activities. So you're listening to specific students, making sure of how they're going and, and evaluating any needs that you need to make adjustments for on an individual basis. You know, you're looking at their writing tasks, the written work that they're doing, and you're focusing on the different skills and you're just paying attention to individual students one at a time and just doing a brief evaluation informally without the students being aware so that it doesn't put them on the spot and it gives you a good idea and then you can just take notes of each student, how they're going, any areas of weakness you feel need further support and you can just keep a note of that. So these are the two basic forms of evaluation, the formal and the informal, and both have their place um, in the ESL classroom and it's something that ESL teachers need to be aware of and need to do regularly. 